Good day, everyone. Welcome back to another interview here on the YouTube channel of Obstacle Racing Media. If you're new, welcome. We do a lot of fun stuff. If you're someone that's been watching for a long time, thanks for hanging in there with us. Today, I've got a chat with Ida Matilda. She is from Denmark. She is a phenomenal obstacle course racer. I've never had her on this program. So today we talked for the podcast. Here's about a 10-minute clip with her, starting with bathing in icy slush. Away we go. I also want to ask you about, can you tell me about this? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So that's like one of my other interests that I care for a lot. Uh, so I do a lot of winter bathing. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Thank yes. You. Yes. This is a, it was, it's because I've been winter bathing for three seasons. I went to bathe with my mom because she lives quite close. Uh, and not in three, this is the first, no, third or fourth season. The water, it's never been this cold in Denmark. It's like the first time right now. It's just, like winter wonderland outside so the water actually froze all the way to the like pretty far out in the ocean so there's just like these gigantic slush ice i would call it mecca right slush <laughs> yeah, right. Is, yes exactly which was just uh really crazy but i i love doing this because you know in denmark a lot of the races you do them in really cold weather and often they have like water uh obstacles and things like that and you get like this shock from just uh this cold uh water flushing all over you so actually training training it does help and then also it's like a little morning adrenaline kick which is quite nice to start off the day <laughs> The, the most alarming part to me is that you just wade into it. The hardest yes. part about cold water submersion is you just want to get in and get your body used to it. But you just yeah. like, doo, 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 yeah. you just casually yeah, throw it. Yes. But I have been doing it for quite long. It does help. You kind of learn to control your pulse and your breathing and all these things uh, that kind of come with it. So, uh, yeah. But it's 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 really funny. I was, I was so is hype you know when i saw this slush ice because i've wanted to try it for so long there's these older ladies in the winter bathing club that's like oh once upon a time we did this slush ice winter bathing or we were like hacking holes in the ice and we jumped in and we're like i've never tried it and then when it was there this uh, little week ago we were all super hyped so uh, that was quite cool so who who carves the hole because it looks like you're holding on to just yeah. like ice like who carves it out for you or yeah, so there is, there is like some stairs, but then there, there, it's some of the people that owns the club down there. They have like these huge things, so they come in the morning and they kind of squish the ice and and puts out salt, so you don't slip when you walk down. And they make it real nice for you. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so that's quite cool. But I've really become a fan of the winter bathing. It's also because it become a bit popular in Denmark now with the. COVID times, you know, people can train, they need something else for a little endorphin kick. So uh, this uh, winter baiting has become more and more popular in general for people just to have a reason to go outside. So uh, actually like quite a lot of people do it now. During this last year that we've been stuck inside, is there anything mm. that you watched or read that affected you greatly? Mm, that's i mean that's a hard question i mean it's been it's been really weird times in general because people have had so different perspectives on how best to kind of react and behave in this uh pandemic and some countries has been like really really just locking down everything and i also guess you know in the u.s where it's such big difference just from state to state you know in denmark we compare ourselves with sweden or norway what do they do what do people do but in denmark there's been a lot of talk because it's very political that they you know decide to close down and a lot of people has been going out of jobs and and all these things so it's been it's been hard and there's been like a few races and they kind of found out that if you do outdoor stuff it's more and more okay but it's just uh, there's just a lot of different opinions and it's really hard to navigate between because um, everybody want of course to do their own best but there's just different levels of what people think is doing your best <laughs> so it can create a lot of uh, yeah different and some people has been like oh uh, 
maybe you train too much with other people or you do too much this and that and you're being very observant out of what everyone does but I mean, as long as you're outside and you're you're thinking uh, about what you do, and I have a lot of like the same people I train with. I think it's more of K, but I I do really miss racing and also miss their just being able to be spectators at races because there was quite a few races last year that I managed to do, but it's just something totally else when you don't have the atmosphere of just you know everybody coming to the race site together and all the busing and things where now it's like you come and you're 10 people and you kind of check in, you go in your race. And when you're done, you take your things and go home. It's just not the same. So I do really miss the real like race atmosphere and just hang out on the race site afterwards. <laughs> yeah. That's, that, it's going to yeah, be interesting. This first, this first race in, um, in Jacksonville. It is. I'm really looking forward to uh, seeing, hoping it goes well. And uh, Leon represents Denmark. Good. Also excited about that. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited too. And, you know, I think they're going to have protocols in place where, mm. They don't want people hanging around the festival area, mm, but mm. They probably are. And will they be wearing masks? Will they not? I don't. It's tough to enforce, you know. So it's mm. going to be very interesting to see yeah. how this how this first event goes. Yeah, I was in Slovakia racing, actually a Spartan race around September, where I raced. Uh, you know, Esther. She also did really good in the Esther Herzegova. Yes, exactly. Yeah, she did a really good. In I came second, she came first. I know it's she is she is just you know. In you have a lot of second and thirds, Ida. I know it's you really annoying, right? Top. But I did. Uh, I won the Red Bull Conquer the Castle this year. Ooh, which is quite nice. Yes, I also came second in the Hunter McIntyre's OCR Stars competition to Lauren Weeks. <laughs> Ah. It's like all these seconds, you know. It's just oh. so annoying. <laughs> yeah, Lauren, Lauren, Lauren is like the person who had the best 2020. Lauren had like the best. Everybody had a horrible COVID 2020. Yeah. Lauren just crushed. Yeah. Yeah, she crushed it. But I also, it's it's a little hard because you know I am the like shorter distance runner, and I also consider now the Spartan Cross is going to be amazing. But it's also I actually signed up for the High Rocks, which was supposed to be in Hamburg in March, but that was just when like the COVID pandemic went crazy. So I everything got canceled and moved because I wanted to qualify for the High Rocks World Championships because it's kind of this combination, and I am maybe a little to the stronger. I, it's, it would be wrong to say heavier side, but I am like a, a more strong obstacle racer than maybe most or, or maybe than necessary uh, than you need. So so something like High Rocks would also suit me quite well. So I really wanted to try it out just to see what what that is just a different challenge, you know. Um, but uh, unfortunately, it hasn't been possible to do that yet. And also, I kind of still love OCR, so I'm a little afraid it's too much away from, but it's just a lot of my training is, you know, uh, being on a rower and then doing some functional movements. And then so a lot of the things, the training is a little bit what you do for OCR also. So it's, uh, yeah. But I do want to see, let's look at this, because I feel like they have a lot of European events coming up, don't they? Yes, they do now, but last year it was impossible. So there was the one in March, which I wanted to go to, but that got canceled. It was like yeah, yeah, end March 2020 in Hamburg. But then they kind of, because in Germany, again, the restrictions are getting a little more uh, strict again, but there are coming some quite soon that I'm hoping to attend. How, how close are you to all these? Essen, Frankfurt, Munich? Very close. Hamburg. I could. It, it will take a couple of hours in a car or you, you could like take a, a local flight. So that would be like Germany is right next to Denmark. So, so that's a lot of events. You could, you could do really well if they don't have a lot of Spartan yes. events. Yes, yes. So I'm definitely, I'm definitely consider. I am going to do a high rocks. It's just because I wanted to qualify for the 2020 high rocks world championships, but that wasn't possible because I haven't done any high rocks this, uh, last year. But but I'll definitely try to qualify for the 2021. That's one of my plans besides the Spartan Cross.
Who were the other um, Germ? There's some really good Germans, right? In high rocks. Yeah, there is uh, Imke. She's really good. She's actually quite small, so it's it's kind quite amazing. She's so good at like the strong stuff, but she just runs really really fast. Also, um, and then there's some of the other ladies that run maybe a bit slower, but they're just incredibly strong. <laughs> yeah. But maybe, let's see, maybe if it suits me, no one knows. I'll find out this year. <laughs> but this is exciting, though, because if you're someone who's just used to Spartan racing now, you do have these other options, right? Mm. The Hyrox is here, mm. and the Deca is here, and the, mm. the new Spartan Cross could be could be good. So I, it's exciting for the sport. It's It's extremely exciting. I think 2021 is like... It's a little different for me because I've also I've always felt like I needed you know more running, more mountain running, more like really just. But now it's actually possible for me to train the things that I'm really good at and to improve even more in them because they get more necessary to be efficient in obstacles. If you do a Spartan Cross, it's like you don't have to be able to do a really efficient mountain running course. And, and also in the high rocks, it's like it's running, but it's shorter amounts of time. And it's more like the the cardio that you have to be able to push and still be able to, to do some heavy stuff with, with a high pulse, right? So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's shifting a little towards things that I think is going to be quite exciting for me. Not that I will definitely still, uh, I mean, all shorter courses OCR you will see me there for sure so uh that's just it's just uh I'm still suffering a bit with these mount mountain runs <laughs> so uh yeah yeah I mean Spartan the, what well, what about this is actually a good question what about running on the sand what about Abu Dhabi I like running in the sand I live live right next to a beach park so I mean that's fine for me running in sand that's that's no problem. I do that a lot. So uh, so that would be fine. And I'll definitely do Abu Dhabi if that gets uh, done this year. That sounds amazing, like really exciting. So uh, and just like the Middle East is just also a really cool place. I kind of want to be Check able to travel there. Yeah, exactly. Uh, my fiance, he lived in Oman for like nearly all his uh, youth. So he's talked a lot about just, yeah, the Middle East being really amazing, very beautiful. There you have it. Thank you so much, Ida. Great to have you on the program. Hopefully we can all travel this year safely and we'll get to see her somewhere in the world this year. Do me a favor and subscribe to all the wonderful things. Look at this thing right here. Look at this thing right here. Josh made this. It's all the channels. It's all the places to find us. Go check them out. Plus the Patreon, which you know is awesome. We're at 191 patrons. Oh my God, we're this close to hitting our massive goal of 200. Uh, you can support a content creator like myself uh, by going to the links below and checking out Patreon. Thank you so much for watching. Love you. Miss you. Mean it. I've got to run.